Hey, what's up, YouTube? Here is a grass interaction system I just released on my Patreon. I actually made many, many attempts at creating a decent grass interaction system the past few years, and that system here is one of the simpler ones I made, so I thought it'd be great to start with it. Its main limitation is that it only allows you to interact with the grass with your own character, so any other actors won't be able to interact with it. Not because it's impossible to do with the technique I'm using here, just that it'd be way too costly. That being said, the result is quite decent, as you can see. We have some sort of trail effect going on with some nice springy rotation, and it all reacts quite nicely to your movement. One of the good things about this system, however, is that it's extremely straightforward to use. 1. Copy-paste that plugin folder to your project. 2. That plugin includes a blueprint actor component that you need to add to your character or pawn or actor. And 3. That plugin also comes with a material function to use in your grass material, like so. And as long as you've baked your grass pivots in UVs, you're good to go. In case for some reason you can't or don't want to bake pivots, you can still use that system, but then you won't be able to rotate the grass blades and you'll have to stick with translation effects, which obviously doesn't look as good, but it's more performance, so you lose some, you gain some, right? <laughs> and that's it really, you have interactive grass with just a shader driven effect, no render target, no nothing. Regarding performance, the CPU cost is pretty much inexistent. The blueprint component you have to add to your character is ticking, but all it does is compute your character velocity. On top of that, every now and then this little function will be called, which just updates two vectors in a material collection, and that's pretty much it regarding blueprint logic. The GPU cost, however, isn't as good. You may have seen the vertex shader instruction count on the grass material here, which is quite high. And indeed, that function here adds 281 vertex instructions to compute the grass effect. And so, depending on your grass mesh, the vertex count and the amount of grass instances you have, that may have an impact on performance. Now, I'm running this demo on a 970 GTX. It's like a 7 years old graphics card and it's running absolutely fine. So when I say it may be costly, everything's relative, right? It's not like you need a 3090 Ti or whatever to run this. <laughs> that being said, whatever GPU cost there is to compute that effect is very well manageable using LODs. What I mean by that is that the interaction effect is only lasting for so long and it's always quite close to your character and the, the camera, right? So you can use your grass LOD to use a material which doesn't have this function in the distance. And for that there's a static switch you can turn off in a material instance. And if I check my grass LODs, you can see that the second LOD, which is triggered around here, see, LOD 0, LOD 1, I use another material instance which deactivates the effect. Let me use a different color for that distant material to clearly see this. So using carefully managed LODs, you can only pay those vertex instructions on the nearby grass, and in the end this system is quite performant. So as long as you're fine with the fact that only your character can interact with the grass and no other actor, it may be a suitable solution for you. Ok, now that I've shown what the system is capable of, let's dive in a little bit deeper and see how it works. So, first of all, I have a material collection which contains a list of locations and velocities for 6 virtual particles. Let me turn on the debug view in that actor component to visualize those particles. And when I say particles, I'm not referring to a Niagara or Cascade particle system, right? It's just a fancy way to say I have a bunch of points in space which contain some data. So I'm basically looping through those six virtual particles at a constant interval using a timer. Each time this function is called, I record the latest pawn location and velocity in the material collection, but also the time at which this particle is pawned. Then in the material, I have this function that checks the current time the timestamp of that particle, and from that I can compute that particle's normalized age 
to sample a curve. In it, I can draw a curve that will describe how the grass reacts to that specific particle's velocity, and that's where the spring effect comes from. Down there, I check the vertex distance to that particle's location to compute a distance gradient. And I basically do that once for each particle to end up with an average velocity. And that's why this technique adds quite a bit of vertex instructions. It's essentially doing a distance check for each vertex against each particle, so that adds up quite quickly. So there's many, many ways to do a grass interaction system, right? This is only one possible approach. It has its ups and downs, but it's still a method I find interesting because it's very, very easy to set up. So anyway, once I have that average velocity per vertex, I normalize that velocity and then use a cross product to get a rotation axis, then compute the length of that average velocity to get the rotation angle, and voila, that's pretty much it. Files are available as a tier 2 reward on my Patreon, link will be in the video description below. Coming up next on my Patreon as a tier 3 reward is a way more advanced grass interaction system which uses a similar ID but combined with rounder targets. That allows me to make other actors interact with the grass and to create custom forces effects like so. Quite cool. So stay tuned and consider joining the Patreon to get access to all kind of cool projects. Recently I've released this blueprint that spawns rocks hierarchically using a recursive function in a construction script, meaning I can spawn big rocks at the first hierarchical level then use a second level to spawn medium-sized rocks around those big rocks, then use a third level to spawn smaller rocks around those medium-sized rocks, and so on and so on. So that can obviously grow exponentially, and you kinda have to be careful with the numbers you put in, but that's also why I put a safety limit here. That plus all kind of controls, and you can create random patterns that are more intricate and more natural looking, than relying on purely randomized locations. And that's a project that is available as a tier 1 reward on my Patreon. It includes the blueprint, obviously, as well as those stylized rocks. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks for your time, thanks for your support. Have a good day. See ya!